So Earth Day is come and gone. Did anyone notice? Did you notice? Just like World Zipper Day or World Cubicle Day. Yes, those days actually do exist. People think they can make a change by simply naming a day after something. I know this is an old message and I sound like a broken record. It's like going over the same old ground. Yada 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 yada. Better people than me have told you the same message before. Leo DiCaprio, Al Gore, and even our own Malaysian Nature Society, all doing their best to tell people to stop consuming stuff. But people still don't give a sh despite all the warning signs. And this Earth Day thing, where folks have this highfalutin idea of holding the increase in the global average temperatures to 2 degrees centigrade by turning the lights off for an hour once a year to so-called save the world. But seriously, can I? Look at Malaysia. We can't even get the basics right. Our public toilets are filthy and biohazardous to the germs themselves. And have you ever taken a KL taxi? There are more suspect communities in these vehicles than some Brazilian favelas. Here's what the local environmentalist Gurmit Singh said recently. We have lost the opportunity to curb the increases in climate change about five years ago. The problem seems to be we know the problem, but we don't want to take the action because there are too many vested interests. A lot of people are selfish and a lot of people are not willing to sacrifice, including people in Malaysia, for example, who cannot stop driving their cars. He's right, you know. People are selfish, self-centered, greedy, all those lovely traits that have led the world to where it is today. Take our beaches, for example. We've got some of the most gorgeous beaches in the world. But instead of caring for them, we've littered them with plastic bottles, used baby diapers, and all manner of human detritus. Check out these pictures of Pantan Chapaka, which I took. It's a beach half an hour out of Kuantan. Disgusting and embarrassing. Malaysia, granted, has made some environmental pledges, the most ambitious of which is a reduction of up to 45% in greenhouse gases by 2030. We've also earmarked more land for protection, planted more than 50 million trees and over 2,500 hectares of mangroves since 2011. But my point is this, people must themselves want to change. Just like avoiding corruption or eating healthy, wanting a sustainable future should come from within, not from some slogan. To be effective, change must come from all of us. It can't come from some top-down government initiative emanating from some slick corporate slides that some consulting firm charge millions of bucks for and we spend way too much time fussing over who's wearing what or which person's faith is better. I mean, there are much bigger issues out there, and climate change is a reality. People suffer from the classic frog in boiling water syndrome, and we've ignored it for too long and it's now nearly too late. The nonagenarian British professor Sir James Lovelock famously told The Telegraph in 2014 that global climate change has passed the tipping point and we should just enjoy the earth while it's still alive. You know, even with all my naysaying, I hope he's wrong. But on the evidence of human behaviour and the snail's pace of change, I'm now inclined to think the good professor is more right than wrong. And so, I exhort you to go forth and travel, to see the world before it collapses on itself in final surrender to man's greedy ways. In fact, go visit the places most at risk of global warming. Places like the Dead Sea, the Seychelles, Mount Kilimanjaro, or even the glaciers in Patagonia. But hurry, we might just be the last generation to see this world before it disappears. Just saying.